Was Sphere Break not enough math in this game for you? Well, it's time to let's play math. Yeah. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X 2. We don't need to fight any battles, let's just go fast. Um, so, last time we finished up all that we could here that was plot related. And I forgot to pick this up because they warped us out of here. The ribbon, the reason that you would invest more than five seconds into trying to get uh, that reverse memorization thing down in chapter two or whatever it was. Yeah, it's an extra ribbon. It's not particularly useful in this game because we're not all that far off from being able to get many more ribbon abilities without actually getting ribbons. All right. Hey, Ludiga, we do Draruma. Let's talk to this guy. We can go back in the hole. Step one. There's a very complicated tutorial that tries to explain this and does a piss poor job at it. So I'm going to explain it myself. Um, so the way it works is, and we can turn the fast forward off them, um, is you open up either of these chests, it'll just give you the tutorial. Nothing has changed on it. So I'm just going to skim through this because uh, it doesn't really matter. What I did there with the option is I agreed to do a tutorial where it's going to make this whole thing set up for me. And it's going to run by itself, and it's just going to give us a little demonstration of how this process works. Basically, this is another mini game of math. It's one of the few mini games left in this game, and the first time in my test run when I was doing it, I was far more confused than I was about 10 minutes ago when I was just testing this out. It's a lot easier now, and it makes a lot more sense. So you press your main button to access the wall. And in this case, they're gonna tell us, you know, there's some numbers, and I already know what the answer is. Seven plus nine. Hmm. So yeah, I think they're just telling me to put in 16. I wasn't paying attention earlier on. So there we go. Now, if you put the correct code in, then that concludes the tutorial. Press the square button, we'll always pull this up. And what we need to do when we do this is we need to, uh, the t number in the top left in yellow indicates the door number. If the doors are not in alphanumeric or alphabetical order or however you want it, numerical order, chronological order, whatever they are. First gate we go through is gate number three. That's why it's indicated in yellow there. The one in the top left will indicate whatever the previous door's answer was. In this case, the previous door's answer was seven. So I highly recommend you get paper and pen and you write these down because without it you're not doing this and just to make life more hell than it already is the numbers are random in each game so all of my answers will not work for you but I'm going to demonstrate the process for you so at least it'll make sense and it'll be easier and easy enough to follow along if you're trying to do that all right in the bottom right corner, we have uh, what's gate number 10. Uh, again, in yellow, it indicates the gate number, and then the number will not be the answer. It will be one of the key values to determine the answer. So I'm gonna go down on my list, go to number 10, and eight is one of the numbers we need. And select done. Now, opening these chests can do one of two, one of three things, actually. Let's see what we get here you can get a helping hand. From now on, uh, when you open a chest, the word bingo appears, the next wall will be opened automatically. And it'll give you some information uh, when that happens. That was what's called a helping hand. Sometimes it'll give you some information about the next one. Uh, sometimes it'll just tell you, you know, um, this was the number for these previous two ones and you'll probably need those numbers going forward. But if you're writing it down, it's not a big deal. The most important thing in here to make it easy, have no encounters on. In some way or form, Charm Banjo if you're not playing on the PC version. This is faster. The reason is because two of the values that they can give you are based on the amount of gill you've obtained since coming into the cave between this gate and that gate, or the amount of battles you fought between this gate and that gate. It makes it a crap ton easier if that answer is always zero. So instead of making this more difficult than it needs to be, uh, there's a treasure chest there that I got in the previous episode, um, then we're just gonna do it like so. 
So let's see, we've got to make sure we got our number. You'll want to press the square button before approaching the door, because when you approach the door, it'll give you a different number. So 10 in this case, uh, in the top left, that's not the actual answer because this is at a door. So if I go out and press that, seven was the answer when I'm out here. Uh, in the top left there, seven was the answer to gate number three. But if I talk to the door, 10's answer is not 59. That is the other number that we need. So we need to do eight plus 59, and we have to add these two together. In this case, our number is 67. No, 68, no, 67. I can do math, I am not very good at math. You'll also notice in the bottom right, we get a hint for the next one. So we wanna write that down, that'll be 36. So we want to input the number 67 here, and that finishes things off. Then you hit the square button. Just double check, make sure that you've got your thing in there, and let's hopefully I get, yeah. I'll, it'll either be empty, you'll get a helping hand which gives you the number, or it'll say bingo, bingo opens the next door. You can avoid them all together. None of them give you items, so don't worry about it. It's just a guess which one, and I think it's a random based on each playthrough. Uh, that is not random, that is a hyper risk. Those are nice, I will take that. Anyway, so yeah, the over here you'll find little things that might be able to help you. This will do a battle breakdown. It'll tell you how many battles you fought to kind of help you out if you're not using Charm Banjo or the thing that I've got right here. It's entirely up to you how you go about it, but I would highly recommend not having on uh, encounters because it just makes like, your life so much easier. What makes your life more difficult, on the other hand, is the fact that every time you try and do anything, the camera changes and then it changes your direction. You get all turned around and have no idea where you're supposed to go. Yeah, it happens a lot and it's a pain in the ass. Okay, I already got that one in the previous episode. We got 36 written down, we do. So let's approach the door here. So we wrote down the, the number from before, and now we want to add another number, 174. And that makes it, what, 210? Now, the other thing you're gonna want is a calculator. The numbers aren't always small. They get very, very, very large. Now, let's see here, 174 plus 36, which I, sh no, not 34, 36. Yeah, 210, yeah, my, I'm, I'm just gonna double check most of them because my math is not so great. Uh, so here we have code for one of the codes for wall number five, which is the next one we're gonna go to, which is wall 10's code. So if we scroll back in our list, scroll, uh, wall 10's code was 67. So we go in our spot and I will, uh, maybe I'll take a picture of my notes once I'm done uh, that I'm actually writing down here and you can kind of see how I've written them down just so it makes a little more sense. So anyway, our number here is 210, that opens the door. Press the square button and double check that we wrote everything down, we did. And we'll guess on another one of these. And it's empty. They tend to be empty a lot. Um, now I'm trying to remember if there was another treasure chest over here. There was, okay, good. Talisman, uh, let's see here. That's the only other one we can get over here, I believe, for now. Yeah, because that wall's in the way. There's also a nice map of this on GameFAQs that shows you kind of where each of the doors are because you have to do these doors in specific orders, which means that we went all the way over here and did this, and now we have to go all the way back to the start. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna fast forward the hell out of that because it takes a while to get all the way back here, and go this way this way no not that way get very turned around doing this uh, let's see we want to go up this way there we go much faster with fast forward anytime the pink thing is there the pink square that indicates that we've already did I do this out of order okay good oh I don't remember it being that one last time but I know it's always the same order but Okay, so let's see here. Now, our second number for number five is 299. 
So that one we have, let's see, 368. So that's our number for that one. And we want to write down a note for number one. The battles between entering the cave and opening wall 11, which we know is zero since we have zero encounters on. All right, so we'll input our 368, and I could have gone the other way, and that would have been faster. But that wasn't the right one? My brain not working? Okay, I know what I did wrong. I can't math. This is why I said I was going to use the calculator. I'm going to use the damn calculator. <laughs> Makes my life easier. 366, not 368. <laughs> Oh, that's pathetic. Okay, I can't do simple math. Try opening one of these things again. What I got? Bingo! So it opened up. Now what they're gonna do is they're gonna tell us what the code was. So the code for wall one was 67. So write that down under our answer column there. And since we knew the first key was zero, the second key is gonna to have to be 67 in this case. So we can note that down, though that's not particularly important, which means the answer was probably, uh, you know, number number 10's, uh, number 10's number or whatever it was, number 10's code. All right, so door number eight, uh, we want to write down 766. That's one of our key numbers. And yeah, so that, stop that. And then we're gonna go this way and we're going to see if we can do the next one. This is a time consuming, tedious side quest that doesn't get you all that much, but I'm going to save you guys the hell that is having to do this a second time because in order to get all the prizes out of here, you have to do it twice. I'm not kidding. And I'm going the wrong way. And I'm still going the wrong way. Wait. Where am I going? I'm looking for door number eight. Where is door number eight? Door number eight is over there. Why did I start going that way? Am I supposed to go that way? Am I crazy? I'm probably crazy. The answer is I'm crazy. Yeah, this is always the right answer. Uh, let's see here. Go down this way. Probably could have got here going a different direction, but this one made the most sense to me in the moment. Okay, so no more fast forward. Uh, so we've got 768 or 766 wrote down. Let's see here, wall eight's code. Wall number one's code, which we know is 67, plus the battles entered since zero. So 67 plus zero. And let's see, so we'll use the magic calculator. 7766 plus 67, giving us 833. Write this down. And then number 12, we want to, for the next one of the uh, codes, and this isn't like the full code for 12, remember, this is just one of the keys. So we got five's code and 11's code. So five's code was 36. So we got 36 plus, and then 11's was 210. Okay, so that's only part of it. That's not the whole thing yet. So the number we need to input here is still 833. So let's do that. Success, I like that. Man, that one's empty. And none of the other codes have changed. And you're telling me I have to go back down. Okay, so we'll follow the leader. There we go. Go open this door. And let's see, so I got that one already. So we'll talk to you. And 12's other code is 754. So we have 754 plus 36 plus 210 equals 1,000 exactly. And we'll write down, yeah, see, the numbers start to get a little bit larger here. So our first code for 13 is 2522. So here we just hit 1,000. Can I not math right? Oh no, it was 366. My bad. 
Okay, I'll start uh, cutting out my maths here. And so yeah, I, I mistook one. It wasn't 36, it was 366. So there we go, that makes more sense. And we wrote down the uh, that one. So big money, good luck one. I don't get these very often. I'm not very good at uh, guessing which one it's supposed to be. As far as I'm aware, it's completely random. So there's that. All right, so I got that. And let's see here. Nope, no. All right, so our second code is 4,654. And our next code for number nine is the battles fought between certain points. So the answer is zero. Okay, and by the way, uh, if you ever need to, like if you forgot what the code was, you know, one of the codes is up on the uh, the left there. Just hit the uh, square button to go out. Hit the square button. Uh, no. Oh, I've already done it three times. Yeah, if, you, uh, if you've looked at the code or the information three times already, uh, they'll give you the option to uh, give up and you won't be able to look at it. I thought something was like that there, but I couldn't find it in the information. But normally you could go back there and double check what the number was. Uh, in my case, I already know, I've done the math. Do that off screen now, so I'm not wasting so much time. So we had 2,522 plus 4,654. And let's see, we wrote down our value for nines. So that's good. And that one's empty. Lovely. Let's go over here. Next one. Oh, and my timer was on pause. Oh, lovely. I have no idea how long this is going to be now. But that's fine. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to keep going until I finish it up anyway. And our second code for wall number nine is wall 10's code, which in my case was 67. So our answer this time will be 67. And we want to note our... Our other one there for number six is gonna be wall eight's code and wall one's code. So wall eight was 833 plus wall number one, which was also 67. You'll see a lot of numbers get uh, kind of done over and over again in this manner. What I find works for me is putting uh, parentheses around groups of numbers when it's not the complete value, like in the keys section when in this case, for key six, we have two number, one number plus another number, and then we're gonna get another key later. So I put parentheses around the first group just to tell myself that I'm not, uh, that I haven't got all the information yet. So there we go. And let's open up this. God, I have bad luck at that. Uh, was there a treasure chest over there? Actually, I think there is a treasure chest over here. Let's go uh, see if we can get that. As long as the uh, the door is open. Yeah, that one's empty. Is the door over here open? Can I go get this now? I don't remember. Do we get it? All right, I think we do get it. Cool. Yay, more treasure. Corpus Inviticus, or whatever the hell that is. Uh, I believe that's another key item. Break damage, break HP limit, or something like that for one of the uh, girl's special dress spheres. Uh, let's go this back this way, and we'll go around and activate the uh, next thing there. Run into the wall while I do it. Yeah, I'm not going to demonstrate the, like, you do have to do this a second time to get all of the items that you can get out of this. I won't be... Uh, I won't be doing that on screen. I'll do it all off screen, just show you kind of the reward for doing so. All right, so I got those noted down for number six. Yes, I did. So go up to the wall. Uh, so here, as you can see, we've had two numbers on the first code for number six, and we have two codes on the next number. So we have 67 plus nine, seven, nine, five. And again, these are random with each game, so don't uh, don't worry if your numbers are all different. They probably will be. And for number seven here, we've got wall eight's code, which again is 833 plus zero in this case. 
Okay, so we got 10,762 with these ones. Yeah, we've done things right. Try the bottom one this time. And of course it's empty. Okay, next one is over here. Uh, I wrote that down for seven. I did. Oh. Uh, remember to use zero for negative gill amounts. Yeah, they'll give you an indication here because uh, gill gain since entering the cave, in my case, is zero. So let's see. No. No, this one is plus two zeros. So we have just a simple 833. Well, that makes life easy. I like it. And I forgot to write down what the code was on the, uh, the 14 there. So let's do that. Yeah, try not to open the chest before writing down the code because you can get screwed over. Like if you got a bingo, you would lose out on what that code was or what that key was, not what the, the code for 14, what the key was. So we have wall six code plus wall six's code. Okay, in this case, that is that big number we just had. Okay, I wrote everything down. Thank God for cutting. It's making my uh, life easier. Uh, did I want to go over here? I don't remember. Do we have treasure over here? Actually, that's where I'm supposed to go. Wait a minute. This is the spot I already got the treasure in, isn't it? I'm going to be a real idiot and do this okay, and just to double check because I don't want to miss treasure. Yes, it was. Okay. okay, let us move around. I can't believe they thought this was a good idea. Running around a dungeon that does have encounters, by the way, and it is actually a really good place to grind if you want to grind because they give a decent amount of experience. But uh, yeah, didn't there do math problems and they thought this was a good idea for a game whose entire point is, you know, fan service. I think they lost the mark on what their audience wanted at some point. I really do. Yeah, it's just really weird. All right, let's go over here. We're most of the way done this. Um, so yeah, I got that done already. And plus wall nine's code. In this case, wall nine had a code of 67. And then we'll write down a simple value for number two there of 12,562. And this time it gets us value of 21,591. Let's open that up. And of course it's empty. And if we go up this way, tell me this is the one I'm supposed to go to. It's not, is it? No, it's not. Fast forward. Yeah, trying to move, navigate around here on four times fast forward is not easy. Especially when the camera angle keeps changing every time you go through a thing. Come on, stop that. I think they'd be nice to you and not change the camera angle on you every time you do anything. But no, the game is evil that way. Uh, let's see, I got that for two. And the other one is battles. So that will be zero makes my life easier. So we just have 12,562. And I forgot to look at what the code thing was for number 15, because yeah. So we have wall nine's code, which again is 67. And Battles and gill, so plus zero, plus zero. Think about how complicated it gets, you know, having to do, you know, three different numbers and trying to memorize them and running back to all of those uh, little circular things that tell you how much you've got. And then of course it changes because you run into another battle. Uh, just, it sounds like a complete nightmare without, uh, without uh, no encounters, it really does. And of course that one's empty too. Um, okay, and this time, we want to do here. Throw on the, of course it is. 
And that one's closed off, so I have to go this way. Never mind. Yeah, they make you run around in, I guess, technically not circles, but squares a bunch of times, which is annoying. Come on. Go, go, go. Be stupid. Crazy Yuna does not know what she's doing. All right, so this should be number 15. So I have my note down for 15. And let's see here. Yeah, they just decide, okay, you have gigantic numbers now. Okay, we added things up there. Uh, so note for door number 16, 439, make sure to write that down. Here we want to uh, put our values in here, which is 113,900. And 48, no, 48, go, and yeah, this one's kind of pointless, um, tell me I get bingo here, just to, to make life funny, yeah, <laughs> it opened the next door, the next door um, is number four, uh, there, the code here for number 16, I guess, might as well note that down, it was 1097. The code for door number one, I think, is uh, always one, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that one. Uh, let's make a couple of notes here. There we go. When I put the picture up, uh, forgive the scratchy writing. I'm doing this uh, in particular just to try and do things uh, quickly. Here we got a garment grid. Um, there we go. And that one opened up that one. Uh, so yeah, the code was one. Anyway, so we've done all of these now. And my timer was off for a bunch of time, so I have no idea how long this episode is. But uh, yeah, that's not all we can get out of here. There is another item for doing it all a second time. So we go out once we've completed everything. And then I think we can just go directly back in. Um, I will show you what we, we get after. I'm not going to make you sit through more of that. Okay, we're back. And yes, the uh, the code was one once again. I'm not sure why it's always like that at the end. But yeah, after doing it a second time, we come back here. We get the Force of Nature accessory. And it disappears. All right, um, hopefully I remember to cut this in uh, earlier on, but uh, this is, I think, door one here, and I forgot to show this off before, so yeah, was this one? No, it was this one over here. I forgot to show off the treasure. It's in the middle of the recording somewhere. Uh, I will put it in there, uh, what I got out of it, uh, and you'll see that there. But uh, that's how you get it, if you were wondering, since I wasn't thinking about that when I put the, the thing on there. But yeah, that's all we can do in here. Guess we don't need uh, that anymore. Let's take a look at what these accessories actually do now that we've picked up a bunch of things. Force of Nature adds all elements to attacks, turns elements to damage to HP, so you have Omni Strike and every elemental eater, including gravity, so that could be useful. Um, unfortunately, since it puts uh, Omni Strike on, I think that includes gravity, which makes it useless against every boss, but uh, there's that. Uh, short Circuit converts lightning. Uh, watery Gleam I got as a drop from the uh, Chimera enemies. Uh, let's see, did we get anything else of value? We got Nature's Lore, that's what we got out of that last uh, treasure chest, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all for those things. Yeah, cool. All right, so we finished up all we can do in the Thunder Plains now. Unfortunately, for the most part, because of uh, the way I'm going to be doing things, that's pretty much the end of our checkpoints, you know, our guaranteed checkpoints for finding out our percentages, because most of the other things I'm gonna be kind of doing them, you know, a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one, a little bit of that one, and I won't be finishing much of anything until we're ready to go on to the final dungeon. Thing is, I'm good up until now. I haven't missed anything. We have the uh, right percentages on everything that we've done. So unfortunately, there won't be another checkpoint from uh, 84, which is what we have now, until we get, uh, I think it's 95%. 
which is a long way away for me. Um, there will probably be a number of things I'll be able to cut out so it won't be as time consuming for you guys. But uh, the last uh, few areas we can go to in the game, they do take quite a bit of time. Let's take a quick look here. What other places do we have left? Okay, so Mushroom Rock is just difficult, but it's worth 3%. Jose and Beaconel are linked. Together, they're worth 3%. Uh, let's see, Guadalslam is standalone. There's not much to do there, just some items and scenes. Uh, Bavel is going to take a long time. And Mount Gagazette is uh, kind of standalone scenes and items. Comlands, standalone scenes and items. So we'll probably end up getting, I think, Guadalcanal and Gagazette finished before too long, since they're easy enough to do. And then I'll either go to do the Jose stuff, or I'll do Mushroom Rock, depending on which uh, which I think has the more difficult bosses. But anyway, that's pretty much all for this one, and I will see you guys next time.